All right. Art. The point, yeah, they give me a laser pointer, so now I am equipped. Um, <clears throat> the visual phenomena of the objective world are in themselves meaningless. When, when Catalan surrealist Joan Miró said in 1927 that he wanted to assassinate painting, he was rebelling against artistic convention, which surrealism was quickly becoming a part of. Unfortunately, he was a decade late to the party. The man who killed painting was in fact this man. Uh, he was named Kazimir Malevich, a Russian with Polish roots, born in Ukraine. This is his self-portrait. And this was how he accomplished the feat. This is a painting of a black square on a white background, oil on linen canvas about 80 centimeters to a side. First exhibited in 1915 and called rather unsurprisingly, the black square. <laughs> Why did Malevich paint it? Why is it considered a pivotal work of avant-garde, one of the most decisive attacks on convention in the history of modern painting? Allow me to set the stage. 1910s, La Belle Epoque is coming to an end, soon to be upstaged by the nightmare of trench warfare, the alarm of revolution, the slow hangover of a generation lost. This was a time of frenzied experimentation in art, as the world became more industrialized, human relationships more abstract, so did art. Impressionism and post-impressionism were old. Uh, Matisse and the Fauvists were not radical enough anymore. It was a time of grand, rebellious art movements, and we can trace them by their manifestos. So, 1909, the Futurist Manifesto. And I quote, we want to demolish museums and libraries, fight morality, feminism, and all opportunist and utilitarian cowardice. Really nice guys. Um, the futurists were obsessed with speed, motion, cars, machines, all things industrial, um, which some of these you see on the painting. Um, they knew they wanted to paint something different, but how to paint it? Well, one answer was cubism, uh, a natural technique for those who seek to capture movement. Now, this painting is called The Dynamism of a Cyclist. And um, if uh, who here sees a bicyclist in this paint painting? Raise your hands, please. All right, some, some people do. Uh, would it help if I show you this? Okay, so once again, right? Through decomposing this, uh, sh shape into these curves and angles, the speed is more self-evident, right? Um, the Cubist Manifesto was published in 1912, but by then Picasso and Braque had been pushing boundaries for years, developing the idea that bodies can be decomposed into cubes, cylinders, cones, uh, f viewed from multiple angles at once. And then a year later in 1913, uh, Marcel Duchamp uh, of the infamous urinal, uh, uh, still back then a simple cubist, uh, the urinal wasn't until 1917, uh, coined the term anti-art, right, and applied it to his own work, the nude descending a staircase, which caused quite a to-do at the 1913 Armory show in New York. Now, um, who here sees the nude descending a staircase? All right, lots of people, but for those who don't, right, it's a time lapse of a figure descending a staircase, right? So three years later, Duchamp will be part of the Dada movement, which was a radical group of artists united only by their lack of unity and their radical, po <laughs> their radical politics and hatred for the establishment. Um, obsessed with senseless, senselessness, rejecting logic and reason, the Dada sometimes made perfect sense. And quote, we had lost confidence in our culture. Everything had to be demolished. 
But <laughs> Russia was slower to industrialize, but just as, the fev just as feverish as the rest of Europe, only colder with stronger dichotomies and more radical radicals. The Russian avant-garde melded cubism and futurism into cubo-futurism and a dozen other movements, uh, like uh, rayonism, uh, one of my favorites. It's, it's, a, it's a bird. Um, uh, the rayonism posited that if we want to paint literally what we see, we must paint the sum of the light rays bouncing off the object. Bouncing off the object. Objects as a philosophical category were the obsession of Kazimir Malevich, uh, who was a successful artist uh, and just short, uh, a few short years progressed from impressionism to symbolism to neo-primitivism, to cubo-futurism, and cubism, and exhibited alongside of uh, Picasso in Moscow in 1913. Um, to Malevich, even the intense abstraction of uh, rayonism uh, was still an attempt to portray a thing. Though cubists and futurists decomposed objects into pieces, though they saw through the illusion of realism, they were still chained to it and Malevich wanted to break these chains. His 1915 show was called The Last Futurist Exhibition of Paintings 010. The new movement was suprematism, a new word and also the last word, alpha and omega. After all, the exhibition sought to nullify all art that came before to start anew. What does this mean? L we don't have to guess because he wrote a manifesto. Indeed, throughout his life, he wrote extensively and obsessively in a mad, rambling, prophetic style, enough to fill a five-volume collection with programmatic texts, articles, pamphlets. Uh, his 1915, From Futurism and Cubism to Suprematism, begins like this. Only when the habit of seeing depictions of little bits of nature Madonnas and shameless Venuses in paintings disappears. Only then will we witness a pure work of art. Of course, he was being somewhat facetious because you see the pure work of art, by his definition, had already been created. He had created it. The new style based on monochromatic geometric shapes was independent from nature every painting represent, representing precisely fuck all. <laughs> the, black, the black square itself was his manifesto made real, not an abstract person, thing, or emotion, only the purity of the void, or perhaps transcendence, a completely objectless creation and which he called a holy infant who came into the world to save it from painting. <laughs> it is not surprising then that, that at, the at the exhibition, Malevich scandalously displayed it in the red corner under the ceiling where the icons of the Trinity and the Virgin would hang in every Orthodox household. The first human created art by mimicking his own stick figure likeness, and all subsequent visual art was stuck with the idea of copying reality onto, onto a two-dimensional surface. Futurism and cubism are attempts to escape this prison, yet by insisting on portraying things, they remain beholden to them. In other words, cubism and futurism destroyed the thing as a whole, suprematism went farther and destroyed the thing. Malevich is livid that he's the only one who sees this truth. Yes, <laughs> glory to the futurists. Glory to the futurists who did away with the painting of portraits, female parts, and moonlit guitars. But, <laughs> but at the same time, yesterday we defended futurism. Today, we proudly spit upon it. This dialectic took Casimir into the Russian Revolution, a time for radical self-expression, if there ever was one quite literally burning the man. He, he, he emerged on the other side, still spitting vitriol. The social revolution, having, having broken the chains of capitalist slavery, 
has not yet broken the old commandments of aesthetic value. And religion and art should be destroyed because they are imaginary phenomena, but they can only be destroyed through the destruction of the state. To Marx, <laughs> to Marx, art, artists were a consequence of the class system. Under communism, there would be no artists, just people making art or memes. Uh, yet communism was somehow slow to come and Malevich became a respected artist in the new regime. Here for a time, radical artists were in a unique position. Perhaps for the first time in history, they weren't marginalized. In 1918, after a series of paintings, Malevich presented white on white. The first real, the first real monochrome painting, it overhangs the precipice where painting ceases to exist. Two years later, in 1920, the last room at his solo exhibition held only blank canvases. A declaration of the end of art and at the same time of endless possibility. Was there anywhere else to go from here? Uh, Malevich didn't feel the need to take the final plunge, but his rival, the constructivist Rodchenko, did it for him in 1921. Uh, quote, I reduced painting to its logical conclusion and exhibited three canvases, red, blue, and yellow. I affirmed, this is the end of painting. <laughs> Rodchenko's ideas seem familiar, yet somehow more utilitarian, more constructive. Uh, down with art, long live technical science. <laughs> or perhaps Malevich was wary of satire reaching up from the depth of art history. I present to you the 1884 uh, apoplectic cardinals harvesting tomatoes on the shore of the Red Sea. <laughs> by Alphonse Allais, uh, which was founded in April Fool's album. Uh, th the 20s were an exciting time in the Soviet Union, communes, free love, gender equality, eat the rich. But, but the writing was on the wall. The Soviet state, the Soviet state, as it turned out, wasn't really with avant-garde. It was too prophetic, too didactic, too ideological, and in these things, it competed directly with the Communist Party. In red corners across the land, Virgin Marys were replaced with photographs of Lenin, Stalin, and Marx, not works of geometrical abstraction. As if sensing a change in the wind, in 1928, around the time when Miro declared his desire to assassinate art, um, Malevich returned to figurative painting. Uh, as an act of rebellion, he backdated many of these new paintings with dates from his suprematist period. Um, also, the, this, this pa painting is called The Peasant, and um, this sort of portrayal of the face is very common in um, Christian iconography. It's, it's the uh, face of Jesus, right? So he is inserting these little bits, uh, these little rebellions into his work. Here's another. Uh, this is a self-portrait painted two years before he died. Uh, this was in uh, 1933. And um, super realist. Um, and you, but there's a tiny little fuck you right here. Can you see it? It's... It's it's the it's the black square. Uh, so, um, de <laughs> right, death death from cancer in 1935 probably kept Malevich out of the gulags. Uh, he never lived to see the official denunciation of formalist art in the Soviet press. Uh, that is art concerned with form without revolutionary or proletarian context. Abstract artists were accused of not being able to draw, from being, being divorced from the people, and the avant-garde was relegated to the underground once again. It would, of course, be hard to find an art movement more formalist than suprematism. Malevich himself was crossed out of Soviet art history until the late 80s, along with many others who failed to transition to social realism. His final act of defiance was his funeral. 
which he had planned in meticulous detail during the months leading up to his death. Above his deathbed was placed a black square. This is a modern mixed media piece called The Corpse of Art. <laughs> he was buried in a suprematist coffin that he had designed uh, with the square and the circle on it. Dressed, he was dressed in the three colors of suprematism, white, black, and red. There was a black square placed on the radiator of the hearse and on the train car that transported the body. If there was any doubt, a black square was also placed on his monument. <laughs> Had Malevich gone to meet his maker or his own creation? Well, neither. He went back to the mud, an object no longer. So, art is dead. Long live art.